Good morning, my name is Ruth King and I'm the Marketing and Event Coordinator here at Hornbill. I'd like to welcome and thank you for joining today's webinar where we'll be having a presentation on how to implement problem management with support work with Alex Trimble, Senior Product, product Consultant here at Hornbill. Just to inform you, Delegate Audio will be muted during the presentations to help facilitate flow and timekeeping. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the GoToMeeting questions facility on the right hand side of your screen. We will collect questions and answer them at the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for taking the time to attend. I will now pass you over to Alex. Okay, so hello folks, uh, my name's Alex Trimble, a lot of you will know me um, from uh, previous work, I've been around the professional services uh, element of support works for a bit of time now. Um, the presentation today is, as it clearly says on the screen, regarding problem management. So the structure is going to be a little bit of theory, not so much, because problem management is a big topic, um, and then a little bit of demonstration as to how supports can help implement and indeed support your uh, problem management function. So the purpose of the session, an opportunity to refresh your knowledge to effectively manage problems in your organization as it clearly says, um, which is fine. So uh, usually what we'll find is people have a service desk and certainly with support works anyway, and with most service desks that are, uh, support the ITIL discipline, we'll have incident problems, service, uh, service requests, service fulfillment, change, etc. So the first thing we need to figure out is, or first thing we want to try to understand is, what is a problem? So according to the ITIL definition, a problem is the unknown underlying cause of one or more incidents. A problem can therefore be defined as something for which the root cause is not yet known. So the goal of problem management is, again, according to ITIL, to minimize the adverse impact of incidents and problems on the business that are caused by errors within the IT infrastructure and to prevent recurrence of incidents related to those errors. In order to achieve this goal, problem management seeks to get to the root cause and then initiate actions to improve or correct the situation. So many organizations will have a service desk, will certainly embrace incident management. What we'll find is organically problem management management is um, by choice or, or by not, is often part of the incident processes. So this might be staffing issues, maturity issues, skills, or indeed just the, uh, um, the, uh, the lack of knowledge as to how to implement problems within the organization. So ITIL itself, it can be a little bit unclear about the delineation between incidents and problems. If we don't run problem management as a, as a principle, as a discipline within our service desk, we're still managing problems. We're still going to have someone that's going to contact us about something of which we do not already know the answer. So we're going to need to manage that problem. The ability to uh, delineate, to differentiate between incident management and problem management can reap good benefits. So going back a, a level, how do we describe the difference between incidents and problems? So an incident, quite simply, the purpose of incident management is to restore service to a customer as quickly as possible. The key point here is the customer and quickly. We're trying to get the customer's impacted service back up and available to them in the shortest amount of time. Now, invariably, this uh, manifests by way of workarounds. So let's take a scenario. A user cannot print a document. The customer is going to contact our service desk and an incident is going to be raised. The incident analyst, they're going to look at that call and they're going to provide a workaround for the customer to get their service back up and running. That workaround could indicatively be giving that customer access to a different printer in a different office. Now the customer's reasonably happy because they can get their document printed. Brilliant. The incident analyst is going to be quite happy because they can resolve their incident. Their SLA clock stop, the service is restored, and they can resolve that and close it and get on with the next incident. Now that's great, the customer service is restored, the incident management function is complete. But what we haven't done is address or look at the underlying cause. 
Now that's really the whole point of problem management is to um, understand the underlying cause, the root cause of these issues to try to prevent them recurring on our service desk. So differences between incident and problems. Incident, it's a fault, it's an error, it's a problem, it's something doesn't work, it can even be a how-to question, but the term used here is incident. It deals with workarounds to customers' impacted services. Problem management, on the other hand, is dedicated to the prevention of the initial occurrence of incidents. So again, ITIL can be a little bit uh, um, confusing here. They're going to make it rather difficult if we're trying to follow ITIL to the T um, to implement problem management, because ITIL will suggest that there is an incident of which we need to manage within the problem management capacity. Now, I don't believe this is necessarily true, but we'll get onto that in a short while. So what is an indicative, typical problem management process? So in very, very basic terms, traditional service desks will have an incident or more raised in the service desk. That will be recognized at some point as a problem of which the problem management team will kick into place and they will trawl through any known errors to see if there is a solution to this. If there isn't, we'll analyze what the problem is and try to find the root cause of that problem. Once we've understood that root cause, we can then create some known error, ideally adding this to some sort of known error database, and present that workaround back to the incident team to deploy that change to restore services to the impacted customers. If throughout the problem management process we find that there is no um, uh, preventative fix, no known error, then we might need to go and raise a request for change to facilitate some change in our network, in our organization, or indeed just within a process to negate that incident. Now this is of course a very simplistic view. So let's look at a slightly more complex view. This brings a few more elements into the problem management process. Now this is still not in any way a full description of process management. But what we can see, we can see that there can be several points of input that can be described or detected as a problem. These problems then get logged, we get categorized, we get prioritized, we investigate and we diagnose. We might look at our content management systems to uh, help us with the investigation and diagnosis. We'll find out if there is a workaround, we'll create one if there isn't, we'll see if there's a change required, we'll manage that within our change management processes until such times we have a suitable resolution that we can apply back to the incidents. <clears throat> Once we've done that, we'll go ahead and close our problem and possibly review it. Now that's fine. All sounds rather simple and straightforward. However, this section here, the investigation diagnosis, everything else around it is reasonably straightforward. It's fairly easy to build metrics into a service desk to understand that this is, is outside of our breach metrics and it should there be described as a problem. It's fairly easy for us to train our incident staff to recognize a problem and pass it over to the problem management team. We can very easily prioritize this within our organization based on what's important to us to prioritize. To investigate it and diagnose it, as in this utopian root cause analysis, is really difficult. Systems can help, our content, our, our content management systems can help with this, other tools can help. But invariably, it's our staff, it's our skill, it's our inherent understanding of our processes, our networks, our technologies. The skill of the investigator is what's required here. It is not easy. <clears throat> so this section in here, the investigation and diagnosis, this is where we would ideally get down to a root cause analysis. And there are process flows for root cause analysis that make the mind boggle. They can go on and on and on. Um, we're not going to be talking about this because that's far too uh, um, detailed a topic to talk about and indeed I'd imagine there's only a few of us that really care or are able to implement fully fledged, well detailed, repeatable root cause analysis processes. 
They're very time consuming and they take a lot of skill. But another thing we can see from this diagram is uh, uh, there are a couple of different methods of problem management. On the traditional model, if an incident is raised and passed down to problem management, then the problem team are reacting to that incident that has been raised. So it's a reactive problem management. We can see on this slide over here, we've got a proactive problem management. So we do have the different concepts between reactive and proactive. So we're going to spend a little bit of time around to understand the differences between these. So there's a bunch of skills involved in problem management, detection, categorization, uh, known error database, liaising support teams, all of that sort of good stuff. But let's take this quick scenario over here. Go back to our customer that couldn't print. Here's our printing service. An incident has been raised by a customer and an incident management team pick that up from the service desk. They will work to provide a workaround to restore this customer's service. In our, our previous example, we provided access to our customer to print from a different printer. Brilliant. Our customer's reasonably happy. They can go off and print. Problem management will then pick up and try to find out the root cause of that issue. What we'll do is deploy our technical and analytical skills that our problem managers have, our problem management teams have, to go and understand why this customer was not able to print to that printer. Now, what they may find out is that there was a software rollout over the weekend that may have impacted the um, print driver that was connected or that this customer used on their um, hardware. A permanent fix might be defined, update the driver, provide a patch, and provide this out to that customer so that they will not contact us again when they can't print to that same printer again. Now, this is all good. This helps us go down into the ITIL um, definition of problem, which is to prevent the recurrence of incidents. Incident management has restored the service, but it doesn't in any way say that this customer isn't going to be affected by that issue again. Problem management has found out the root cause, applied a known fix to that customer, this customer will then not need to raise the incident with the problem manager, with the uh, service desk again. Great stuff. Now this is reactive. We're waiting in the problem team to find out what we need to look at. We're driven from the incident management process to tell us what it is we need to look at. Now most of us will probably do that, whether that's defined in the, its own set of principles as in problem management or if that's just part of the investigation phase of an incident i don't know but it's still reactive problem management that's taking place proactive on the other hand is a slightly different process so proactive problem management i feel states the unknown underlying cause of one or more incidents this is not necessarily the case for proactive. What proactive problem management may be able to do is understand problems that might be affecting customers in the future. So we do not necessarily need to have an incident logged before we can start to address problems that we may have within the organization. So let's take our, our print service <clears throat> running along the top. There is no incident. We're going to proactively look at our print service. We're going to be looking at all of the inputs that affect our organization. And we'll discuss some of those in a short while. But these will relate to things like changes, releases, monitoring tools, event monitoring tools, um, uh, knowledge management. We're going to look at these inputs and we're going to be able to diagnose, analyze that there might be a potential of a problem coming up, such as a software rollout we may identify that this software rollout is actually going to impact certain drivers and certain hardware. We can then proactively go around and amend this, provide that patch to all of our customers so that when the software rollout is rolled out, then this customer doesn't lose the ability to print. So no one's complained that they aren't able to print. They haven't noticed that they would not have been able to print. Yet we still fixed a problem and that's great. Now, that really is supporting the ITIL definition of minimizing the adverse impact of incidents and problems on the business because the business did not receive any impact, did not receive any incidents, 
because we uh, proactively prevented them. Now that's great, but it takes time. It takes a lot of effort to be able to sit down and potentially think about what might be a problem. Often we just don't have the staffing numbers, the skills, or indeed the wherewithal to be able to sit down and do this type of analytics within our organization. It can also rely on other inputs, monitoring systems, telling us when there might be alerts or alarms that, that might cause us to look up and see if there might be a problem. So techniques that will allow us to implement problem management, first and foremost is good incident management. If we're not logging our calls, then we will have no way to base our problem management on. Now, often it's the case that problem management will start to integrate or start to work with P1, P2 calls. These are high priority. We need problem management to quickly get in and look at this. That's not necessarily the case. That's more an incident management issue. What we really need for good problem management is to, is to have all calls logged, no matter how trivial, no matter how low that priority is, because a low P3, P4 uh, incident now might escalate in a month's time to a high P2, P1. If we're not logging it, then we don't have the ability to get our stats out about it. We've got no way to analyse that information to understand if this is something we should be looking at now or in the future. So once we are logging all of our incidents, once we've got that set up in our database, it's critical to categorise it and prioritise it. We need to ensure that all teams within the support structure are using the same types of language. If I categorize it with an impact of X, does that mean the same thing to all my teams? If it's prioritized with a SLA of Y and a priority of one, what does that mean to other teams? If we're not speaking the same language, then we're gonna lose information. We're gonna lose the prompt that we should really be looking at this. So obtaining the correct level of good information at incidents is crucial to supporting the problem management function. So there's plenty of detection and analysis and trend techniques. There's pain value analysis, Pareto, Kepner and Trago. These are all different ways of analysing reports to try and find out where our problems might be. But we do need to do this. We need to look at all the tools available to us, and we may have limited tools or we may have a wealth of tools, but we need to understand what those tools are, understand the outputs of them, so that we can continually analyze these outputs, continually update our error control, keep our knowledge, uh, our, our known error database up to date, so that when these issues do arise, we've got a quick resource that problem management has provided to instant management to swiftly restore the service back to our customers. Human detection as well, experts. Uh, if we've got people that we trust in our, in our areas of expertise, a hunch is often more than a hunch. I think somewhere it's been proved that expert hunches are in fact the brain giving us a bunch of subconscious triggers related to a bunch of subconscious thought processes that more often than not are probably true. So we should listen to our experts, we should analyse our data, we should categorise our, 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 our incidents, and we should log them all properly. Now indeed, for a full gamut of problem management, certainly within ITIL, we need to look at the inclusion of other ITIL processes. So these are the ITIL processes, seem to be. So back to our issue of our customer that can't print. We could have fixed that issue for that customer. That customer's service is no longer impacted. Brilliant. Proactively, we could have gone round and fixed that for him. With a good CMDB structure set up, we'd then be able to extend that problem management function to find out who are all the other customers that use that same hardware with that same driver. Let's go off and proactively give that fix out to these customers before they even realize they might have a problem. Availability management, customer says they can't print. Might that be because we've bought a new site, we bought a new company and added them onto our network and our network is stressed. 
we saw that the uh, capacity of our network is to the limits, we should be managing that to prevent our problems and indeed to be able to address them. Event management, do we have a and &E network monitoring tools that are able to alert us and give us an idea that maybe we need to start looking into this? Are we able to proactively have these tools let us know that there are problems for us to go and fix before customers are impacted by them? Are we managing and maintaining our change process? Is it a case that our problems, when they present up to change, is there a complete dislocation between change and reporting back to problem team? If so, then that doesn't really help our knowledge to be built up. When it comes to knowledge, are we managing that properly? How are we categorizing? What are the tags that we're adding into our knowledge? Who is owning this knowledge to make sure that it's still relevant and pertinent to the customer's internal and external that might need to be using it. And indeed, is all of this being pumped into continual service improvement? Is all of this part of a plan to make the service we deliver out to our customers a better service? Ultimately, it should be. That's the whole point of the ITIL uh, structure. Problem management is in itself one small cog in a big wheel. It's a very important cog in a fairly important wheel. If it's managed properly, we're going to get some great results from it. Now, another thing that we mentioned down the bottom here is generally management. So I've mentioned before problem management, it's not easy. There's different skill sets required between incident teams and problem teams. Incident teams are technically are technical experts. They know our network, they know our tools, they know how to quickly provide workarounds to it. Problem management are also technical experts, but they're analytical experts. We need to sit back and think about what this problem might be. We're not just getting the customer service restored as quickly as possible. We're understanding why it happened. Now that takes time. Time is money. Is management bought into this to allow us to have problem analysts sitting there thinking about a problem? Reactively, yes, we do. Of course, everyone needs to perform reactive problem management. Proactive, on the other hand, how do we justify to the business that we're going to take that number of heads away from tangible physical work to go and think about possible issues that might be affecting us? If we can, we are going to reap benefits. We will reap benefits. But it's a fairly challenging argument to have to our management to provide this sort of functionality or this sort of service within our business. So benefits. If we can uh, deliver it, we're going to improve the service. We're going to reduce the incident volume. Uh, we're going to build on our knowledge within the business. Our incident team, every other team, and customers are going to benefit from that knowledge. It's going to be maintained and upheld. We're going to respond to our incidents swifter, and we're going to ideally have higher productivity, both internally and externally to the IT organization, and indeed to the entire business. Brilliant. Effectively implemented problem management can be a real asset for your service desk. So let's have a quick look to see how support works can help with this. Okay. So initially, as we know, SupportWorks has got CMDB. Things are quite well related, coming from our organization to our sites, to our customers, to our calls, to our intercall relationships, to our CIs, assets, services, etc. We've got that level of information available to us to perform, that analyt to perform those analytics on the reports. As soon as we log in, we can see that there are problems. This helps incident management guys. What problems are there? We can see major incidents. We can see on our services whether our services are impacted or not. This will hopefully be driven automatically for some systems monitoring tools. Brilliant. We have got multiple classifications of calls. We have our incidents. We have our problems. Let's go and have a look at one of these problems. It has an original description. There is apparently a workaround available to this. We can publish this as a known error. Once we publish it as a known error, we're able to go off and create knowledge articles about this. We've got a whole bunch of associated information from causing CIs, the problems, 
causes of the problems, affected CIs, associated incidents. So we've got these four associated incidents, impacted customers, impacted organizations. All this information is very useful to us. We can go through as a problem escalates. If it were to escalate, we can go through and attach further incidents to this. We've got processes in the system which can automate the definition of the uh, impact level. And we can display this uh, our notification in various areas of the system. So if we go and publish this as a known error, that's grand. We can uh, uh, update incidents with this. So, so we're informing our incident management teams. We can provide workaround information. And that's all great. All adds to the wealth of the KEDB, the knowledge error database, known error database. So from here, we're able to come through and raise change requests. All built in, that's fine, as we would expect. Incident to problem to change. We can add this information to the knowledge base. We can further go and define the preventative fixes and root causes. Um, at this point, we'd assume we know the root cause because it's a known error. When it comes to the known error database, we've also got our knowledge base. So if we come through and have a quick look at our knowledge base around here, if I go and search for all the items, we've got some, e some items around here about email not working. Brilliant. What we can find here, we've got our problems and our solutions. Within feedback, what we're able to see is how many people have accessed this. This is quite useful for us. We should be checking on these sort of measures. If people are looking at a certain piece of knowledge a lot, it's probably because there's some sort of problem around it. Proactively, we can identify that and go and have a look ourselves with a good analytical skills to be able to uh, uh, address an issue before it might even be there. Indeed, down on knowledge management, if we have a look at our keywords down here, how do we describe an email issue? Is it email? Is it e hyphen mail? Is it mail? Is it pop? How do we do it? If we're doing it differently, then we won't be able to get information back out, and so our knowledge is going to be difficult to manage. On the services that are associated to this, let's go and have a look at our problem again. On a problem, the service is causing this is an email service. Okay, fine. So what information can we find about our email service? We've got a bunch of knowledge articles that might help about this. Initially, straight away, that adds information to the tips of our, of our incident and problem management teams to be able to go to find this information. If this is all kept up to date and kept in sync with what is relevant and what is real and what we continue to find out, then hopefully we'll be able to implement problem management in a organized and efficient manner. So I hope this has been useful. I hope it's helped somewhat. Open the forum up to any questions that we may have. Uh, okay. So a question might be, um, how would we actually start? We've got an incident team. How do we start to uh, create a problem management team? First thing I'll do is to ensure that A, the language is correct. Are we all speaking in terms of language that allows us to identify a problem? Are we categorizing? Do we have a problem profile built into the system? Um, uh, do we have a problem profile set up? so that we are able to alert our analysts if there are problems. So things like back in our call profiles over here, I've got my communication and email. This one's going to tell me to alert me if there are two calls logged of this type in this amount of time. If there are, then I may come through and designate a problem manager or someone which is going to care about these. And I'm going to specify that they have got the ability to receive potential problem alerts. In that instance, this guy is going to get an email if we have two calls logged using that profile into our period. That can at least start to let us know that there's a potential of a problem. From there, we need to make sure that we've got good skills available. We can potentially use the skill sets around here on each of our analysts to understand the skills that are each of our team members 
have got to be able to address this, then we can start to designate these guys as problem teams. Now, of course, from there, there's the um, issue of utilization. We don't want a problem, uh, problem team member to sit there doing nothing, so it's a question of whether we have a distinct use or distinct team for problem management, or indeed whether we just have designated personnel which have got the skill sets, the technical and the analytical skill sets to be able to perform the problem management role. So there are a bunch of resources in problem management. It is a very big topic. Um, a lot of the information that I've uh, um, garnered from here is from the ITIL library, indeed, from supportworks.com. We've got a couple of uh, um, papers and documents relating to this. It does go on. It's a massive discipline, possibly the most difficult to complete um, with assurance problem management. It's probably the discipline, I feel, that can reap the most benefit within our business. Obviously, outside of incident management, that's more of a logging and uh, um, quick fixing. The problem management, if you get it right, we can prevent those incidents from hitting our desk so we can concentrate on improving the service out to our customers. So that's it from me. If you've got any further questions, do let me know. I think most of you have got my contact details. If you haven't, please uh, um, send any requests you may have over to care at hornmill.com. You can find further information relating to support works at youtube.com, user hornbill cares, and these other resources. Indeed, as well, whilst you're about it, have a quick look at service manager on hornbill.com. And I thank you all very much for your time. Thank you, Alex, for taking us through that presentation. I hope everyone found it useful. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact me or your relationship manager. The recording will be made available on the customer forum through the SupportWorks YouTube channel shortly. Finally, thank you everyone for your time today. We hope you'll attend our next Hornbill Academy on the 8th of March, where we will be hearing from a customer success story from the University of Glasgow. Thank you and goodbye.